Da, 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 the Bake Bake Down. Welcome to the Bake Down Podcast, where we discuss hot takes on hot bakes. Hi. <laughs> and today we have a very special guest. This is Corey from Hey Cake This. <laughs> so, Corey, uh, why don't you just tell us a little bit about what got you into cake decorating? Oh, wow, that's a, that's a full thing. Um, <laughs> Well, what got me into baking was um, it started as a hobby. After I, I was at, baking, actually was my second career choice. Um, what was your first one? My first one. I originally went to school for video game art and design. <gasps> That's so cool. Yeah. Why just switch to baking? <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so it's like it was. It was like um, yeah, going to school for video game art and design, three D modeling, animation. I learned all that stuff. Um, after I graduated, I realized that. The video game industry was very different from how uh -huh. I thought it would be, and I decided not to go towards that. Um, what things, if I could just interject, did you not really like about it? Learning about how the reality of it, Ed. Learning, <laughs> <laughs> learning the reality of the video game industry, like constant hours of overtime, um, being sitting at a computer pretty much all day, and also like, just like, just the video game industry wasn't exactly what I thought it would be. So right. yeah. And um, so when I graduated, I didn't go further pursue that and just got a simple computer job and I found myself baking in my spare time. Hmm. Amazing. I want to talk about the accolades that, oh. uh, that Corey <laughs> has. So you've been on a few productions, is that correct? Yes, I have. So go ahead and tell us, dazzle us, oh my about gosh. what it is that you've done in the baking world. Well, um, well, I've been on Food Network three times so wow. far. <laughs> but um, yeah, the first time was um, in 2019 where I was on Wedding Cake Championship Season 2 and mm. I was paired with my friend Liala of Shook Up Cakes. Love Liala. Yes. Amazing She's cakes. <laughs> and, and, um, we, and then we pretty much, like, it was funny because back then I was one of the few bakers that she knew and then I remember getting a call from her one day saying so like, hey, I just got reached out by um, Wedding Cake Champion is it and they're looking for teams to cast and it's like do you want to be like my do you want to be like my partner and team up and I'm like uh yes <laughs> <laughs> so then like yeah we put in the application before you know it we got news that we got cast and laugh <laughs> that's so exciting <laughs> and was that a long term type of Challenge? That was a that was an elim elimination type. It was an elimination. Yeah. So then we were there for a good. I want to say like a good. Oh, was it like two weeks? My gosh. Two weeks yeah. of filming. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah wow. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, yeah. It was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and then what was the other baking contest that you did? Um, in twenty <clears throat> in twenty twenty, I um I teamed up with. Liala again, as well as Rachel from Happy Cakes, and we got cast in the season one of The Big Bake. And you guys made BC Becky that time. Ah, yes we did! We made BC <laughs> Becky! BC Becky! Yeah. <laughs> that cake was incredible. Oh, it, it's gotta give kudos to Liala for that because it was her original idea and she based it off her daughter actually. Aww! Yeah. Like we actually like when we were brainstorming ideas, like we each came up with an idea, and Liaz was most like unique, and we thought it was like, oh, this is so much fun. Um, so yeah, we drew, uh, she drew inspiration from her daughter, and like with a little umbrella and stuff like that, and we made BC Becky, and she rained <laughs> on the entire cake. I the water on the cake for me, I just thought that was such a risky but so innovative. Oh, mm -hmm. I have to say it was like Rachel got called like, okay, like we got to make water, but it's like, how are we going to do it? Because water melts fondant and yeah. all everything. But then she came up and said, there's this edible shellac that like I know of. So it's like, I'm just going to get a whole bunch of it and we'll make it work. And so, and Rachel pretty much did it. And Incredibly yeah. ingenious. And we're like spraying it on everything, like every single look. I swear I got some in my eye that, that day. <laughs> Oh, if you use airbrush or anything like that, it's going up my nose for <laughs> sure. It was like coating everything, I swear. But um, yeah, it, it was totally just brought your cake to life and really made it feel like a story. Yeah, I loved it. Um, so yeah, it was wild. Wow, mm. wow, wow. That was the second time. 
That was the second time being mm -hmm. on Food Network, and the right. third time was on The Big Bake again on season two. Oh, Amazing. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With so, a different team? With a different team this time. Um, it was happened because um, a baker in, in the neighborhood, basically she reached out to me, her name was Claudia, and she said, hey, I saw you are going to be on season one of The Big Bake, and they're doing casting for season two, like, do you want a team? I was like, okay, <laughs> sure, <laughs> why not? And then so we found a third baker, her name's Gwen, and um, we basically put in an application, just like, do, 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 and like, we got a little interview and stuff like that, and then got an email saying, congrats, you've been cast for season two of The Big Bake. That's so awesome. And I, got, I remember getting that e email before our episode actually aired in season one. Oh, really? That far ahead. <laughs> so, so it was like, what? Wow. <laughs> what? So it was crazy. I don't know how you handle that because the one TV show that I've been on, Cross Country Kickoff, if any of you want to go and see it, um, it's on Crave now. Uh, just, it, it was so much fun, but it really takes it out of you. Like, I was exhausted after that entire it, it's, experience. It's a lot, and it's like super stressful, and you're up at it. Filming days are basically like 18 hour film days, essentially, and it's mm -hmm. like, ah! Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, I, I, it's a blur to me still some parts, like, I still don't remember some parts that happened in the Big Big Season 1, or in, like, the Big Big Season 2, and also when it came like, until I watched it, I was like, oh, that actually happened, or like, oh, I did punch that mermaid cake, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'm just like, what? It's like, it must have happened, because they caught You punched a mermaid cake? <laughs> Do you have a thing against mermaid cakes? <laughs> One of the techniques I was using for Rice Krispies was that you have to compact it. So okay, yes. I did not realize I was punching it. <laughs> but yeah, it, it was it was crazy. That is so much fun. So I guess if you guys want to see the results of that, then you should definitely go and check it out. Can we link those episodes? Um, I believe they are on, uh, I believe, what was it? Slack TV. Slack, Slack TV, Slack TV. okay. Slack TV. Uh, is this Slack TV or Slack TV? <laughs> Uh, but um, you are able. To, I, they are. They. <laughs> um, you'll be able to find them on online streaming services. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, Fabulous. Yeah. So stack, Slack, whatever it is, <laughs> you can find Corey. <laughs> and um, how many years of cake decorating experience did you have prior to being on Food Network? Um. Well, I. I've been doing. That was around tw 2019, so I had only been baking for maybe, say, well, caking on my own for, say, four years, I guess. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so you felt prepared. Four years was enough. <laughs> well, nothing could prepare you for being on TV. <laughs> like, nothing. It's completely different. Mm -hmm. So it's like, ah. <laughs> I don't know. It's just it's like, oh, this is cool. Let's do it. And we said, we did. And we said, okay. And before you know, we were being flown off to, like, L.A. and, like, like driven off to this like very scenic like vineyard destination and basically we were baking in a tent <laughs> in like an open tent in the 28 to 30 degree heat wow celsius yeah celsius, celsius. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah w there's nothing that we could have done to prepare us <laughs> for that how do you get your buttercream to set uh or ganache uh, did you use just a really high ratio or like what it was it was we had to like pivot to like using instead of butter to shorten it. Shorten it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is never as good. It doesn't nah, taste that nah, nah, nah. But at least you didn't have a collapsed cake on the floor. Well. <laughs> well. Tell us the tea, Corey. Well, is your cake on the floor? Not on the floor per se, but. <laughs> But no, you know, honestly, nobody bakes in that, those kind of no. fashion. Nobody. Oh, no. Like, no one bakes in it. Very time. unrealistic. Yeah, it's very yeah. unrealistic. Yeah. So, certain things, if you do watch the episode, uh, there are certain things that did fall. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> but in a cake down situation, um, I also had like a little bit of a cake fail too, <laughs> where my cake didn't unmold from Ooh. my pan. And it's really funny watching my reaction because I just go, eh. <laughs> 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 it's just like, what else are you 
you supposed to do in the moment? I know, right? And, and all I'm thinking while I'm doing this too is I'm like, they probably want a reaction from me, but <laughs> this is what I, the energy that I'm going to like, give. Yeah. Eh, time to pivot. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. But I think that's part of being a cake decorator. Mm -hmm. Like, honestly, when you're doing those giant custom cakes, you are going to have lots of failure, even if you're good at it. You're just going to have little things here and yeah, there. That's like, you, okay, this doesn't work. Did you learn how to... Because you can't possibly have done every single design, even after years and years. You or, can't. Or do yeah. everything perfectly yeah. either. Yeah. I remember one of the first trick tips I was learned when I was in, went to school for um, baking was hide your mistakes when it comes to caking. Like, oh, there's a crack? Put a cloth on it, flour on it. I feel <laughs> like it is just... Cake decorating is, to me is just a series of hiding your mistakes. Like, <laughs> or like just like making it work with what you got, really. Definitely. And then just like pivoting. Pivot! <laughs> Pivot! So like, yeah. I always think this is an interesting conversation. And Alia is the one of us that is actually a certified pastry chef Ooh, with her red, red, red seal. seal. She's the red seal I big know. deal. <laughs> so um, what do you think about... In the cake industry, I mean, what percentage of people are actually certified pastry chefs? Like, what do you guys think? From anecdotally, just what you know. In, like, the baking world in general? or just No, the cake I mean world? specifically, like, the cake, cake, the cake de decorating. De definitely world. not a lot. Not too, too many. Because, like, in pastry school, they teach you everything. Like, there's a giant unit on breads where I was so bored making the same breads over and over and over right. again. Oh, I, I feel ya, because I, I worked at a bread bakery before, mm. and... Oh, just like, I could feel my soul just, like, die. <laughs> so I was, like, doing the same, like, making, like, tens of tens of tens of doughs, or, like, feeding the starter every single mm -hmm. time, and I was like, Slice the bread, uh, hydrate it, put it in the oven, take it out. Exactly. Is there any joy, though, to that type of perfection where it's like, you know it's going to turn out the same every single time? Or is it like you don't get joy from that? Because I feel like I'm the type to get joy from that, but maybe not everybody. I think I did. Like, I was satisfied when I got the hang of it and I <laughs> knew, like, I'm making this type of bread and it's going to turn out great today. And then I get to eat it after. You get to consume it. <laughs> I don't think Corey was sitting in the back, though, eating bread. <laughs> you don't know that. <laughs> you don't know that. Like, eating the fresh baked bread was oh. my favorite part of yeah, the that, bread. Yeah, I have to admit, fresh baked bread is so good. So good. <laughs> you know what's interesting? And I just feel like when I've had, like, really, truly freshly baked bread, I don't enjoy it as much. Really? Okay, here, listen to me. It's because, <laughs> <laughs> it's because I find it gets kind of gummy in my mouth sometimes. Oh, because it hasn't had that time to, like, set as much. I, I guess. guess. But I kind of like that. I okay. like, I, for me, like, because I still actually like to bake sometimes in my mm -hmm. spare time. I make my own sourdough bread mm -hmm. from scratch, mm -hmm. from fresh, like, yeah. Yeah, the sourdough start. So then when I, oh, there's just, to me, nothing hits, like, a fresh baked sourdough bread. I do so. love sourdough. Bread. And then, like, it, it's so different from the ones you get in the store, because, like, yeah. fresh out of the oven, it's like, ugh. Mm -hmm. and you could yes. I could just eat the whole loaf. Just yeah, like, and oh. when we would make breads that had, like, the inclusions, like, I made one that had, like, um, garlic and cheese Ooh, and yeah. jalapenos, and, like, when you have the slice with the fresh melted yes. cheese, it's so good. Yeah, <laughs> I could see that. But, in the cake world, I feel like if you're someone who specifically wants to work on cakes, especially, like, the crazy cakes that you guys made mm. when they bake, like... Yeah. You don't need pastry school for that because they don't even teach, teach you that. that. This is such a yeah. unique thing. I feel custom cakes kind of just blew up over the past like tens of yeah. years. Oh, for like, sure. Yeah, and then mm -hmm. there's like, there's no real manual. You just kind of figure it out and people are still figuring it out now. Yeah, <laughs> like we yeah. learn cakes in pastry school, but it's like the traditional, traditional the pie royal borders, icing, the and swags, yes. <laughs> yes. buttercream yes. roses. Mm -hmm. And when we make cakes too, like just buttercream cakes, it's all like the exact same cake over and over and over again. Just a super simple cake. They want to make sure that you can do basic piping and writing on cakes and oh the writing so much writing <laughs> yeah. practicing so many Making times the piped chocolate decoration oh, yes, 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 yeah. yes. so and could you speak to the fact that because i know when you were going through pastry school you had already learned how to cake decorate one way 
yeah. before. And then you were asked to do all these different types of like protocols. Yes. So can you talk about that a little bit? I think it's kind of interesting. Yeah. My first year in pastry school, when we got to the cake unit, I was so excited until we had to start masking the cakes and... And what like, does masking the cakes mean? Like covering a cake in buttercream, mm. like either crumb coating or the final coat. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure we all use our large offset spatulas and our bench scrapers. Yeah. In school, we weren't allowed to use those. We had to use two straight spatulas only, just a small one and a large one. Mm -hmm. And when we were masking the cakes, it also wasn't on the cake board. It was directly on the turntable. Mm -hmm. And then oh. you'd have to crumb coat it, move it to the cake board so that you could put it in the fridge then clean off your cake board while it's in the fridge, and then when it's time to do the final coat, take it out of the fridge, put it back on the turntable, put it back on the, the turntable, turn mask it again, and then carefully move it back to your cake board. Yeah. And what is the reason? I asked, and they said it was just to keep the cake board really clean. But to me, it just felt like so much extra work. Just be careful and then clean your cake board. I feel like there's also more right? room for error, because you're moving yeah. cakes yes, in there. Exactly. Like, what if you went, oop. <laughs> <laughs> and I also remember asking why we had to use two straight spatulas because yeah, I had talked about offset. Yeah, I talked about how an offset was so much faster. Yeah. Um, and I remember my teacher didn't have an answer for me and went to go ask another instructor, uh. and the, that instructor just said it was a more skilled way, which I guess is like. Okay, yeah, it's good to learn it so that you have the skills, you know, if you're ever in a situation where you don't have the tools that I you need, so. I guess. But, but then, <laughs> like, but later it's like, oh, and I'm never doing this technique ever again. Yes. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done it since that unit of pastry school. So, Which pastry school did you go to, by the way? I went to VCC. Oh, you went to VCC too! Yay! I, know. I didn't know that you went to pastry school. Yeah. Well, I went, you didn't finish the Oh, yeah, time. I'm sorry. Um, I, I did, actually. I, like, um... He's a pastry chef undercover. So following back, um, baking was my second career choice. Yeah. Um, I was baking a lot in my spare time. Sorry, we're currently <laughs> going from topic to topic. It's so But um, we, I was baking my spare time, just watching a lot of Food Network, and like, oh, I love making cheesecakes. I remember just making cheesecake upon cheesecake and making macarons and just making. Like things for fun. Mm -hmm. I remember my mom had to tell me to stop making cheesecake because she loves it. I stop. You're making me fat. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> so um, I I thought I could maybe go to school for this because like it was been a year since I like graduated and I was just baking in my spare time and looking into VCC and stuff like that. However, my parents were very um, very wary. Of my choices, they're saying like, "Are you sure this is what you want to do? Like, you just went to school for video game art, and like, why don't you go into that? And like, what if you wasted like your time and money? Like, what if you go into this and you never?" So yeah, I was very very anxious about that. Um, but I I remember one of the one of the most one of the things that got me to pursue that was actually the words of my late cousin. Mm -hmm. um, I remember having lunch with her one day and I told him my whole predicament is like, I'm scared, I don't know what to do, what if they're right, what if I waste time, and then my cousin was like, like, how old are you, like, you're like 20, 21, 22, and it's like, just go for it, like, what have you got to lose, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, you're young, it's like, you're gonna try things out, you're yeah. gonna make mistakes, I see all the time, <laughs> so that was like, the, that was the, kind of words that kind of got me to go pursue baking and That's stuff That's awesome. Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I just remembered too that we did talk about this once. So the first time that I met Corey was mm -hmm. actually after I had done a pastry school class and I decided to go get ramen for dinner. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> I was like debating it. I was like, that's definitely him. I We've never met though, so would that be weird? Yeah, I was, I was, I was just having ramen with a friend. And yeah, like you, I remember you. I remember that so vividly. Yeah, <laughs> I totally yeah. forgot about that till right now because then we were talking about yeah, school yeah, and the instructor yeah. that I had at the time and stuff like that. Wow, so you have your full red seal and everything. Not red seal. Oh, okay. I did graduate. I did go through the program, which is like the basics, pastry, yeah. cakes, and then there was the two. It divided into two, which was yeah. like arts and breads and um, arts and breads and traditional breads and advanced pastry and pastry and mm -hmm. desserts. So then I took both. Oh, you did? I wow. did take both. Cool. I did take both. Yeah, yeah. So it was just three months or three months. Yeah. And then, yeah, I decided to take both. So then I learned how to make, like, you know, starters with, like, old-fashioned, like, um, 
grains and stuff like that, yeah. and also events, pastry, patisserie, also doing chocolate and sugar work and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah, amazing. So, um, work, I found, got a job at a bread bakery. Oh, before that, I actually worked at a little hotel. Uh, I worked at the Sutton Place Hotel for a bit. I mm. love Sutton Place. Oh my gosh, they had the chocolate buffet back then. Yes. Where you, everything was chocolate. So I'm like, <laughs> you can, oh, it was just fun making all the chocolate things, like chocolate cheesecake, chocolate mousses, mm -hmm. and like I remember like doing stuff for the chocolate fondue and stuff like that. And they had a crepe station too, which I also mm. did crepes there too. That's so fun. They don't, they don't have the chocolate buffet out there anymore. How dare they? How dare? How dare? How dare? How dare? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and then I worked at a bread bakery and basically, as I mentioned, <laughs> Right. Yeah. But you're kind of a jack of all trades then because I, you've seen all different sides of the and pastry. I, and then I'll do them essentially, yes. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, after working at a bread bakery, I got a job at a cupcake, at a cupcake bakery mm -hmm. where I was the baker and then I taught myself how to do storefront. And then I, but then I was also taught how to make the cakes and like other things like cake pops and other sweets. But I was also like the inventory person, the delivery guy, the fixer upper. I even changed the pipes here and there. I was basically these are definitely things I've never done in a bakery yeah. job. <laughs> so I was like a jack of all trades there. And um, when I decided to leave, I thought, you know, what? I like video games. I like cake. Why not? Combine them and so do something fun. on my own, and that's how I made my business called Hey Cake This, and it it's gonna be ten years next year. Ten years? Wow! Wow! Yeah. That's what you're gonna do to celebrate. I don't know. I don't know. You're going so to good. make a cake. <laughs> the surprise! <laughs> but yeah, it's gonna be like officially like ten years next year. So wow. that's wow. That's so cool. Um, both Corey and I are Chinese, <laughs> and I came from a very traditional Ooh. family. So the idea of going to pastry school to them was me admitting that I am the biggest failure mm -hmm. in life. So even though I know that that's not the case, pastry work is super difficult too. And from the test that I saw Alia take, very <laughs> academic still. So how I really admire from what I'm hearing that your parents are very supportive. Now they're supportive. Ah. Now they're supportive. Now they're supportive. Now they're supportive. <laughs> now that because like they've seen all this stuff, they now they're supportive. But before they were definitely very, um, very hesitant for me to go toward this. Cause then my dad's like, oh yeah, do bakery, work at Costco, get it, like get like get coverage, get like your insurance right. and stuff like that. Because right. like that's kind of what they're used to, the nine to five constantly and my mom's also a businesswoman too she has a, she owns a clothing stores in Chinatown okay and um she knows business but she doesn't know anything about cakes and stuff like that so obviously she's like I don't know this so I'm not going to suggest it but then um once they saw me doing stuff getting like like opportunities opportunities and like like it's yeah they're supportive now <laughs> I, I feel like that too is quite open-minded still though mm. like the fact that they were like oh go to a bakery and do this you know because my experience was you know put down your spatula and go to university yeah. on your merry way to become xyz you know so it's just always like be a lawyer be a doctor exactly. or like always get a's and okay. exactly i actually think a lot of it was that they wanted me to meet a partner mm. like in university because I went to, um, I went to, not a, I wouldn't call it like a prestigious university. I mean, it is prestigious in Canada, but I feel like it's nowhere close to like Ivy Leagues in like, I, in, in like the I States. But, but yeah, I feel like it was to, to meet people, but jokes on them because I ended up with my <laughs> high school sweetheart anyway. So, you know, in this smaller town. Um, so yeah, I just think that was, that's really great though, that you had that support behind you. It was scary. It was scary yeah, doing this. So it's like, for sure. Cause it's so unknown. And then like also me making my own business, like, what am I doing? I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just flying by the seat of my pants. Yeah. And, and, and it's like nine years later, it's like, I must be doing something right. You must be, <laughs> I must be doing something right. Yeah. So I guess if I look at the two of you, I mean, you're both successful in the in the baking world in different ways <laughs> and but but do you think how with all of your education that you guys do have <clears throat> is it necessary or could you have foregone those educational experiences and still been able to do the things that you're doing right now i think if you're only focusing on cakes definitely don't need that 
that education. It did like teach me a lot just in general though about like working efficiently and fast and working in big production kitchens. Um, even if you weren't making breads and tarts and like all the fancy things mm -hmm. too. Um, but if you're solely focused on cake decorating, I definitely don't think that it's uh, like super necessary. Mm. Yeah, I kind of have the same feeling, but I want to say that lots of people just could do all this because they have like, they're pretty much forming like the resume of what they've done so far. Obviously, mm. building resumes is like a generational thing. It's like, you know, you know have experience, so you totally. show off yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, but I feel like with cake decorating, especially now, there's so many resources to learn. Exactly. And like, like free you don't... education on YouTube. Yeah, or you could take <laughs> classes, online classes. You could pay and learn different new things online. The, the yeah. world of internet. Mm -hmm. And it's so different from how it was back then, where mm -hmm. they didn't have the resources we have now. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah. I'm even making a series on my personal YouTube channel ah. about baking theory, like all the theory we have. Oh, to there's so much theory. Yeah, there's the science of baking. Yeah, because I think so that's much. so interesting, and I don't. I feel like I don't see a lot of that on like social media or like on the mainstream. Essentially, yeah. so yeah. usually just hidden. In, maybe you like find it if you're going to mm -hmm. the black hole of YouTube or something like that. Yeah, or exactly. like the rabbit hole. Sorry, but it's so like I, I want to put that out there that's too. Really cool. That's really cool. That's really really cool. cool. Oh, my baking journey so far. And I have to admit though, um, even with my experiences of going to school and stuff that, bits and pieces here and there come up like, so, oh I remember I did this so I could apply that to something that I'm doing right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like for um, video games and stuff, I learned how to do the computer. I also learned like animation. I learned how to do like Photoshop and those are the things that kind of use towards my business. Yeah. Like I made my own brand logo. I know how to like do websites. Yeah. And that's how, that's like, nothing's ever really wasted I feel whenever you, whenever you learn something. Like mm -hmm. all knowledge is good knowledge. All knowledge Definitely. is good knowledge. I think I completely agree with that. I think um, from someone who didn't, like I didn't go to pastry school, mm -hmm. I didn't do any of that fancy stuff, but I did, like, just like you guys, experiment, learn how to actually cake decorate. People did give me pointers, like, and, and really great tips, mm -hmm. but I think that sometimes people jump into cake decorating with only that thought in mind. Mm -hmm. Like, I need to learn the mechanics, I need to learn how to do it, and then I'll be this, you know, cake decorator making money. But I think that it's so important to learn the value of answering to somebody. Mm -hmm. And I think that's like when you're talking about like how you had to like run on a schedule and you had to make sure that X, Y, Z was ready. That is so valuable. And like same with you, you worked at Sutton Place, you worked at, as a bread baker, having to answer to multiple different people, not just your customer base, but somebody that knows what they're doing and you're running on those timelines. I think that is what trains you to be a successful entrepreneur on your own. You can't just jump from, okay, I went to school, entrepreneur, or okay, I learned all the things that I'm supposed to. It's like practical experience. You mostly. have to. Practical exactly. experience. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. so. Because much of what you do as someone, you sell cakes, um, is you need to be able to be personable. You need to be organized. You, <laughs> so oh, organized. Yes. You need to be able to roll with the punches. Like all those things doesn't come from tutorials or, or exactly. solely education. It's yeah, basically right? just like practice and like just training yourself, so to speak, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Developing skills and following through every time. For sure. And I think it's really cool just hearing all of the stuff that you've done because I've known you online yeah, that's true. We, we, for a while. We met for the first time at Jajar. Yes. Yes. We met, we met at another bakery completely, just at random. And it was his big opening, so obviously that's why we were all there. Yeah. But it was really cool and I just feel like when, once you have baking as the connection, it just makes it so much easier it's true, yeah, for the yeah, college. Yeah. I remember meeting you for the first time. I thought, hi, Ashley, hi. Yeah. I felt like I met you before, but no, this was my yeah. first time. <laughs> Each totally. other. And yeah. you watch each other's stories and yeah. you're like, oh, I know what he's up to. Yeah. Yeah. I know what you're up to. Yeah. And like, yeah. um, actually, me and Farsa, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Corey definitely knows everything that I put inside of my stomach, <laughs> for sure. In the last, oh, like, all the food. <laughs> oh, love it. Love and we're going to go share some food right now. But before you go, Corey, we have a little something Wait, for what? you. <laughs> what? <laughs> 
So we're actually going to be gifting these to all of our guests, but you're the very first one to experience this. I, I didn't, you know, I seriously didn't know that I was the first guest. Yeah, what? Really? <laughs> so we've reached out to some other guests that we're going to be having on here. Pardon our messiness in uh, being able to get this together, but you are our first guest. And we wanted to give something that was zany, that would always make you remember us and being on here. So here you are, your own pair of oh sunglasses for being such a superhero and fantastic oh, in the KK world. So, hope you enjoy them. We're going to go have some hot pot now. We will see you guys later and thank you so much for joining us. Bye! Bye.